It's often argued that Joseph Stalin was solely driven by a thirst for power, indifferent to the struggles and aspirations of the working class. However, a closer examination of Stalin's four attempts at resignation and the wealth of evidence found within the Soviet archives reveals a more complex and nuanced picture. Let me begin. Throughout his time as the leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin made not one, not two, but four documented attempts at resigning from his position. These instances provide intriguing insights into his character and motivations, challenging the simplistic notion that he was solely obsessed with power. Stalin's first attempt at resignation occurred in 1922, shortly after the Russian Revolution and the establishment of the Soviet government. The country was in turmoil, grappling with the aftermath of war and economic challenges. Stalin, perhaps recognising the immense responsibility on his shoulders, sought to step down to alleviate the burdens of leadership. However, the party voted against this. In 1926, Stalin made his second resignation attempt. This period was marked by internal power struggles within the Communist Party, with rival factions vying for control. Stalin's decision to resign can be seen as a strategic move, aimed at navigating this political landscape and maintaining stability within the party. However, the party again voted against this. The third attempt at resignation happened in 1928, during a time of significant social and economic transformation in the Soviet Union. Stalin's aim was to create an opportunity for new leadership to guide the country through these challenges. This gesture demonstrates a sense of self-awareness and an understanding of a need for fresh perspectives in times of transformation. However, the party once again voted against this. Finally, in 1952, Stalin made his last recorded resignation attempt. At this point, he was already advanced in age and faced declining health. The decision to resign can be seen as a recognition of his physical limitations and a desire to ensure a smooth transition of power. However, the party voted against this, and tragically, just months after this resignation attempt, Stalin passed away, leaving behind a legacy that continues to be debated and scrutinised. These acts underscored the importance of considering the broader context and motivations behind Stalin's actions, rather than reducing his entire legacy to a single pursuit of power. The fact that Joseph Stalin made multiple attempts to resign from his position of power carries significant implications. It suggests a noteworthy willingness on his part to relinquish control if it was deemed beneficial for the workers and the Soviet Union as a whole. These attempts demonstrate a recognition of the weighty responsibilities associated with leadership and a desire to prioritise the well-being of the working class over personal ambitions. Rather than being solely driven by a hunger for power, these instances reveal a leader who considered the greater good and was open to the idea of stepping aside if it served the best interests of the working class. Such a willingness to let go of power highlights a more nuanced understanding of Stalin's character and challenges the oversimplified narrative that he only cared about maintaining his own authority. Also, Examination of the Soviet archives reveals a treasure trove of information, shedding light on Stalin's actions and policies, providing concrete evidence of his concern for the workers and their well-being. Specific documents, testimonies and records showcase his commitment to improving the working conditions. For instance, the five-year plans outlined in the archives illustrate Stalin's ambitious industrialization efforts aimed at transforming the Soviet Union into a modern industrial powerhouse. These plans directly benefited the workers by creating employment opportunities, improving infrastructure and increasing production capacity. 
Additionally, social programs are implemented, including free education and healthcare, ensuring access to essential services for all of the working class. Comparing Lenin and Stalin, the archives reveal a shared commitment to workers' rights and welfare. Lenin's writings and speeches demonstrate his dedication to creating a society that prioritised the working class. Similarly, the archives exhibit Stalin's continuation of these principles, as seen in his labour reforms, land redistribution policies, and the formation of collective farms, all of which aim to empower the workers and alleviate inequality. This comparison highlights the consistent focus of both leaders on improving the lives of the working class, as evidenced by their actions and documented in the Soviet archives. It is noteworthy to address the Western scholars' attempts to find evidence in the Soviet archives to support the outlandish claims made about Stalin. Despite extensive scrutiny, these claims have consistently failed to find substantial backing. Western scholars driven by curiosity and a desire to uncover the truth have combed through the archives and searched for any material that would substantiate the exaggerated narratives about Stalin's alleged disregard for the workers. However, their efforts have been largely fruitless. Instead, what these scholars have discovered in the archives are records that showcase Stalin's policies and actions aimed at improving the lives of the working class. The lack of substantial evidence supporting the baseless claims raises questions about the credibility of these accusations and underscores the importance of examining historical sources critically. The Soviet archives, as a valuable source of information, present an opportunity to dispel the myths surrounding Stalin and provide a more accurate understanding of his leadership and his commitment to the welfare of workers. Western educators have consistently made claims about Stalin, which are not only exaggerated, but just completely untrue. Such as, Stalin personally orchestrated the deaths of millions of people during the Great Purge. Stalin intentionally caused the Ukrainian famine, known as the Holodomor, as a deliberate act of genocide. Stalin was solely responsible for the outbreak of World War II despite the complex geopolitical dynamics and actions of multiple countries leading to the war. These claims are made so often, yet no real substantial sources are ever given. But I'll probably make videos on all of those claims another day. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And if you did enjoy this video, I would suggest watching this video, critiquing anarchism from a Marxist-Leninist and Marxist-Leninist Maoist perspective. I'll see you there.